laptop barely got memory on it, so I think it'd be fine. On my end, though, we'll see. Yeah. God willing. Let's just pray, man. All right. Yeah, no technical difficulties, guys. But anyways, we're back at it again. It's Sean Christopher Jenkins. We got Justin Lee Howe, my co-host on all my videos. All right, so on my YouTube channel, Upload Past Crossroads, if you go there, you know that me and Justin have done a lot of videos together, right? Like a ton. So on my YouTube channel, Upload Past Crossroads, I have a lot of playlists of just like all, all the videos that we've done. I put them in a certain playlist. So you whatever you want, you can get your feel, right? So one of my favorite playlists is, you know, God Speaks Through Creation right here. If you scroll down, you'll see it. And with that playlist, that's when I just talk about how God just is talking to us through creation. He's saying how he, he all, all creation is revealing his glory. It's showing him in some kind of way. And right. And so, for example, when it's, it's a little sneak peek, by the way, Justin, like when animals go extinct, mm -hmm. so if any animal goes extinct, right, human beings are missing seeing an element about God, like seeing his glory in some kind of way. Right. Because everything he everything he created comes from him at the end of the day. Right. It's a part of him. It, it represents him. Right. So God is speaking through creation, like giving us revelation on how animals are operating or how, you know, the wind blows or anything like that. Anything creation points to God. So that's what this focus of today's video is. And then also I have another play that's titled, you know, book breakdowns or book reviews. And this is where I just take uh, one of the books I've been reading. So if you don't know, I'm, I'm in seminary school now. So in graduate school um, and I'm going for my master's of divinity at Colgate, Rochester, Cozer Divinity School in Rochester, New York. And so I'm doing it remotely, obviously. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, Mount Julia, Tennessee, to be more specific. So and we have a lot of books to read. So I'm in Christian Belief Today. That's one of the classes I'm in. And she gave, like, she gave us like at least 24 books to read, like for the whole semester, like, you know, like just from August to December. So it's way too many books. But I mean, it's the books about God. It's books about the Bible. So I'm loving it. So one of the books we had to read was this one. It's my favorite one, probably. I think it's my favorite one. It's titled Ask the Beast, Darwin and the God of Love, Elizabeth A. Johnson. This book is phenomenal, man. Like, so good, right? And so I'm going to read some excerpts of what this book, uh, the author wrote in the book, to really hone in and pull out what me and Justin want to focus in on for this video, right? So I'm going to describe the book real quick. So this book, Ask the Beast, you know, Darwin and the God of Love. So it's obviously talking about Charles Darwin or whatever his name is <laughs> and how he believes in the evolution. And uh, what else does he believe in, Justin? You know all the science terms. Uh, so. he um, like he, he purports like a natural selection, like the yeah. fittest will survive. Like um, if genetics starts changing up like the body parts or the structure of a creature then like only the best genetic alterations are going to survive if, if mm -hmm. only useful stuff is going to survive if right. something if uh, something pops up with um if something pops up that hinders them or is not as good as like another um mutation or body part they're gonna fall behind like only mm -hmm. the fittest are gonna survive this man i love having you on video man I, like i forget that you're a science guy so like this is perfect right so like yeah. yeah i'm excited about this one because like i do yeah i do think like um i feel like rarely do you get to see um science and religion meld together because everyone thinks it's separate but man no god made the laws of the universe and biology like this is it this is his cup of tea like that's where general revelation comes from man, we've had some fun. like that's another video we need to do all right that's totally separate from this but just talk about how science and god mix because that's what she said. Like, when you look at Charles Darwin's stuff, like, and you look at Christianity, right? It's two sides of the separate coin, and everybody's either on one side or everybody's on the other, right? Yeah. Like, for example, Darwin believes in Big Bang, right? Does he believe in the Big Bang? I actually right? don't know. I only know his bi biological viewpoints. Okay. Well, people believe in the Big Bang. People believe in, um, I want to say, is it called evolution? What is that called? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think evolution is like a big umbrella term. So yeah, I feel like yeah. the the biggest things are like um, Big Bang, um, evolution, and then life coming from nothing. Yeah, okay. So that's all stuff Darwin believes. And then Christianity, obviously, we, we have faith, right? That's the biggest way to put it. We have faith in certain things. Like, 
But like, there's so many angle bit and ambiguous. There's so many ambiguous. Yeah, there's ambiguous. You know, that's the word I'm looking for. Ambiguity. Ambiguities. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. There's so many ambiguities in between both of them. Like, you know, like whatever side of coin you're on, because. A lot of times people try to separate science from God or God from science, but they go together. And that's what this author was talking about. Like, and that's one thing Darwin does good. Like Darwin doesn't just like have faith, like, you know, but he is having faith in something, but mm -hmm. he's in denial of that. Right. But he has, uh, but he's focusing in on something Christians don't pay attention to. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the title of the book's talking about that the title of the book's talking about ask the beast darwin and the god of love right so she's showing how like okay we may not agree with what darwin says or science or whatever as christians but like it's still it's still something you should like you know you know take it take it with a grain of salt like you know pay attention to it a little bit like darwin focuses on the beast like the bible says to do he focuses on creation and this is what we're going to see right so this is like at the very beginning of the book on page um what is that? 15, 18 on page 18. I'm actually going to throw out my uh, two cents as well. Cause I'm, I may be devil's advocate throughout this video. Cause I, okay. I don't know if like evolution is real or not, but like I have faith that however God wanted to bring life or like all these different species, I definitely think he could have like directed evolution in the way that he wanted. Right. Because as we'll read from, as we'll read from the origins of species, like the last chapter in the book, like Darwin does kind of allude to like, um, he does kind of allude to like, there's a grandeur to life that could have been breathed from an intelligent design into like multiple forms. So I don't like, I'm not, I'm not gonna say evolution is true or not. I'm not smart enough to say that, right. but I would say like my faith as a Christian definitely does not want to put god in a box like i think he like i think he could have just like took some dust and like gave it life i also think like um that could have had poetic meaning and like um species could have evolved in a way that uh god directed it. but like that's just my two cents i want to put that out there before the video really um picked up speed no i like that you said that man like that's very facts like that's that's why we need to do a separate video just like just talking about science and God. Like, do they mix together, right? Because mm. at the end of the day, both sides are both sides like people on the science side think they're so right and they mm. think Christians are so stupid, and vice versa. People mm. on the Christian side think that mm. science is has nothing to do with God. It's so stupid. Like, but like you have to you get, I mean, some stuff you're just not gonna know. Like both sides are too confident at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So like, for example, human beings came from monkeys. But that's a lot of confidence, right? Like well, some people got a lot of confidence in just that, right? Or they, or we got a lot of confidence that like with the creation story, right? The book of Genesis. But like the Big Bang doesn't exist. But when God speaks stuff into existence, stuff literally just popped up, just yeah. showed up. So like, it's kind of a Big Bang a little bit. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> thing with the Big Bang, too, is like scientists, sorry, uh, I'm not going to like take us off topic too much. But yeah, with the Big Bang, it's like scientists have shown like they needed an infinite amount of energy and like an infinitesimally small point. And like, to me, I think what would have like infinite energy except God? Right. But like, I think, I don't know, I think like scientists have been able to pinpoint like all the beginning of the universe because genesis actually talks about the beginning of the universe and like when i think of infinite energy i think of like god like that's the only thing that would make sense so i don't know i i i i do think the separation of science and religion is actually a very new thing because scientists used to look for like the laws of the universe as like the canvas that god has made creation and i think like uh, the book you're talking about definitely shows like, like, yeah, creation is evidence of like an intelligent designer. Like Einstein, Einstein unfortunately didn't believe in God, but he was kind of on the right path in that uh, he had this quote that uh, science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind because mm -hmm. they both support each other. It's like only very recently that 
um, for some reason, we think they're on opposite sides of the spectrum, but really they work in tangent with each other. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, just in case you don't know, I got a lot of stuff going on, man. So I'm in seminary. Um, me mm -hmm. and Maya are still trying to get married, um, but we're putting off the wedding um, just to figure out getting a house. You got to get a car. I just got a lot of stuff going on. All right. So mm -hmm. like, ideally, I would like to do a lot of videos on this book. But we'll see if I can get to it because I have a 12 page book report to write basically on this book because that's what so much. Yeah, that's what I chose. There's to write. lots to say about it, but 12 pages is like a lot. I mean, not if you not if you are passionate about the subject, like you can write about it. That'd be easy for you talking about Darwin, you know, so you just got to focus in on something. Basically, that's what yeah. grad school is. Great paper. You just focus it, focus in on it or something. Have a point straight to the point. This is the focus. And then tear it up. Go all the places with just that one point, like a sermon. All right, guys. Well, let's uh, go ahead and get to it. All right. So I'm going to read it. Uh, I'm going to read one of the first pages of the book, right? It's one of my favorite parts of the book. So this is the book again. All right. So let's go ahead and read it. So the author wrote this, Elizabeth A. Johnson. She said, the last paragraph of Darwin's On the Origin of Species opened with a beautiful image well known to him from many walks in the English countryside. It is interesting to contemplate an entangled bank clothed with many plants of many kinds, with birds singing on the bushes, with various insects flitting about, and with worms crawling through the damp earth, and to reflect that these elaborate constructed forms so different from each other and dependent on each other in so a complex a manner have been produced by laws acting around us. Man, when I read that, that was so powerful. Let me read something else too. It's on the same page. It's, I think it's right after that. It says, note the ecological richness of his vision with the entangled banks, plants and animals depending on each other in so complex a manner and equally relying on the soil and water of the damp bank then inhabit, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and keep on reading. Like she says, I invite you, the interested reader, so everybody that just heard me read that, to keep before your mind's eye your own version of an entangled bank, whether it be an ocean beach, an urban park, a lakefront, or a river bank, or a wetland, a farm, or woods, a block of a city trees, a prairie, or a mountain range, the side of a highway, or an open field, a nature reserve, a coral reef a public garden, plantings on a campus or in a backyard garden or even a window box on the seal. Any place where land and or water with their plants or animals, domestic or wild, has drawn your attention, refreshed your spirit, even lifted your mind and heart to God. I might as well just keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the very first page, so right after uh, page 18, that, that was uh, in numeric. Roman numeral, right? So she said this. So when we contemplate the whole globe as one great dewdrop, drifting dotted with continents and islands, flying through space with other stars all singing and shining together as one, the whole universe appears as an infinite storm of beauty. All right, Justin, I'm gonna let you say what you thought about all that, and then I'm gonna say something. So, man, it's like it, like that's the essence of like ecosystems and ecology and man, just biological harmony, I guess is the best way to say it. It's like so poetic too. Um, or maybe that's just how old timey people always sounded like. Um, but, and we, I've mentioned this on the channel before, like we do live in a perfectly balanced ecosystem as well. Um, and it almost translates to Paul's writing on like how we're all different parts of the same body. Like we have different functions, but we all support one another. And none of them are more important than the other. And that's the same with like nature. Yeah. Like everything has its purpose. Like the, like the sun provide, the sun provides the proper, um, the sun provides the proper, like, light photosynthesis that's required for plants the plants um supplies the food for animals animals upon animals like depend on each other to like not only not just like eating each other but like we 
require like these microorganisms or bacteria that we can't even see like in our gut um, or like on our skin or like in our immune system to like survive. And then um, I guess to quote like Lion King, like one day we'll die and we'll provide nutrients back to the land uh, for the plants. Um, but it's like everything is perfectly balanced. And I think Darwin like really actually lifted the veil of like general revelation on that, like showing that there is a creator um, in like this whole process. Mm. Yeah, like when I read that, what I first saw that stood out to me was she called it the entangled bank plants uh, mm. in animals. So uh, what else did she call it? Let me go to it. So I, I, I put that in white to make it stand out from the orange, but yeah, where, where is it at? Yeah, contemplate the entangled bank. All right, so obviously bank's kind of an older term to use, like, uh, but, so I would just say meadow, like just picture a meadow, right? Or actually just go outside. So that's what I tell the video. I tell the video, just go outside and see God's glory, right? Mm -hmm. So all you have to do as a human being, like I want you guys, this is the visual I got when I read all that, like when I first read it. I just thought about, just looking outside or going outside and just looking around to see and be aware and conscious of like what's around you, like what's all out there outside your house or wherever you are inside. There's a lot of stuff like that you don't even like see and you're not really paying attention to. And you don't really think about because it's not like there. Right. But how many ants are underneath the ground in the soil that you're probably like you don't even know is right there. Yeah. Right all around our house right or underneath our house you know what i mean like terrifying to think about yeah yeah like and that's just what ants and worms right and then whoever else like bees wasps like how many creatures are outside like you hear birds chirping all the time right insects flying so there's a lot of stuff outside there's a lot of stuff here in this world and in this globe so at the end of the day it's not just you here Right. As a human being. But that's what we that's what we focus in on in Christianity, in the church, as believers and even with the Bible a little bit. Um, most of the writers. Oh, well, that's not really true. But, you know, some of them, they focus in on just humans. Well, I would say our theology preachers. I'm going to talk about people in the Bible, but people just focus in on us like as human beings, you know, us and our love for God, you know, our problems. OK, but what about creation's problem what about the plants problem what about the bushes problem what about the insects problems or the worms problem you know there's a lot of stuff in this world going on around us mm. a lot of times we live in our own little world our own little bubble and that's what this author is saying at the very beginning of her book like just go and look at all creation right and that's actually a lot of passages in the bible that's why i renege and step back on what i said like some of the writers of the bible don't talk about it. no that's not true like they focus in on that because like i mean we talking about the creation story like one verse me and justin talked about not too long ago and a lot of my youtube channel i talked about is psalms 148 you know all of creation is praising god right <laughs> if you're created you're literally meant and created to praise the lord like you can't get away from it that's what you were created and function to do like the sun can't get away from it the moon can't get away from it the stars can't get away from it angels can't get away from it uh <laughs> Leviathan and whatever else is in the deep of the ocean, they can't get away from it. If there's aliens, they can't get away from it because you know, 90 to 90 to 95 percent of space has yet to been discovered. So who knows what's up there, right? So it's just so much stuff in creation that we don't know about, right? And we don't pay attention to or acknowledge, but they're praising the Lord, right? There's so much stuff we don't know, right? <laughs> so there's so much ways to look at this. Right. But the whole focus of this video is just going outside and pay attention and see God's glory. Right. Go to the banks, just like Darwin from the origins of species said. So, so a lot of people would just look at Darwin and shut it down automatically. Oh, Charles Darwin. Oh, man. Obviously, he's atheist. Like, he doesn't believe in the Bible or anything. Like, you know, just shut it down. You miss your blessing doing that. Right. You miss your blessings. You see, you know, science, they don't believe anything the Bible says. Okay, well, what is true in science, right? Like, there's so much stuff revealing God's glory through science. Justin will tell you, I will tell you, because I'm a computer scientist. I just see it on the 
computer science, but I've seen it also with everything else because I'm a scientist in general. So like, yeah, we're gonna talk about that in the video. Just stop me if you want to say something here. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go to these verses because this is really gonna like bring everything home. But if you got you got anything you want to say before I go? Here? Oh, just a little bit. Uh, I kind of want to hear how where you're going with this too. But right. yeah, like I do like that um, because we do tend to, and this was just making me think about like Mark chapter two when um, Jesus was eating with uh, like Levi the tax collector or Matthew as some of us know and like he was eating with like other sinners and the Pharisees were wondering why he was eating with sinners but it's like they were like so close-minded to that as well um, I know this doesn't sound related to what we were saying but it's the same thing about how a lot of times we're close-minded about what is God's purpose or like who are God's people? And it's like the same thing with like um, things in this world. Like, yes, we should run away from things that are not of God, but we should also open our hearts and our minds to like things that God might have for us as well, or the people that God has for us. And I think this is the same thing. Like if we just shut off an entire group, like say like science, like that closes us off from like, the purpose of God's creation that closes us off from like potential people that can be brought into God's fold because they offer something. I, I know like a lot of Christians that are scientists as well, and they bring so many interesting perspectives or views into God's fold. And I think we need that. Like that's a beautiful thing about Christianity is like, we're all like, we're all created in the image of God, but we have like so many different perspectives um on like what is with like what is and who god is right and that's good that we got different perspectives like that's what i was trying to say at the beginning of the video like all of creation is pointing to god in some kind of way in some kind of capacity all of creation and that's what some christians do they try to exclude things mm -hmm. for example my class was talking about sex right this is a great 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 talk, talk about yes thank you god so like we were talking about sex one of the authors and one of the books we were reading, basically, and this is really appropriate to say, but I'm gonna say it. Um, she said like, you know, being with God, just, and this would be a good video because it's real controversial. She said, being with God is like sex. It's like a, or, or I'm not gonna say it, but it's like sex, I'm gonna just stop there. So like, and she said, if you think about it, like sometimes God puts you in a position he, that stretches you, that you really don't want. And it shows his dominance, right? So then it leads to the greatest pleasures you could ever experience, right? I'll stop there. That's a great visual. All right. So that was not the, just talking about, I thought I was going in. <laughs> well, I mean, but you know, just God and sex. That's what it because a lot of times people exclude sex because oh it's taboo. No, Yo, God's not in it. Right. The sex, but sex is a gift from God though, too. Yeah, so like we but just because it's something that it's inappropriate, right? <laughs> Obviously, we shouldn't be talking about sex with everybody, yeah. right? It's yeah. Between your wife Time and husband. Place, yeah. Yeah, but like just the church excluding it completely. Like, not even talk about it, right? Uh, you know, it got to be some type of balance. Like, God is in sex, but like we, we think only bad spirits are within sex or something, right? Like, God can't be experienced in sex at all. Like, God's not in it. He didn't create it. Like, it's like He didn't create it, like we did or something. Mm. You know? <laughs> You know, but like that's that's the topic. Like a lot of times people try to exclude just like with creation. We were just talking about it. What's around you? Are you aware that you're seeing God like you're seeing something that's representing him that's pointing to him? Right. Are you paying attention? Because if you're not, you're going to miss out on a revelation. And that's what the author said of that one book with like relating God and sex. Like um, she was just saying, like, you know, if you come prideful. If you come always thinking you already know everything, mm. you're gonna you're gonna quench the spirit. Mm. You're gonna quench like having a new revelation about God, a new insight, receiving a new insight about God, because you already think God ain't in there. So you you try to box and tame the Holy Spirit and tell the Holy Spirit where He can work and where He is and all those things. But the Holy Spirit is everywhere. He's always working. You can't stop it. If you tell me He don't work through sex, like you know, in a marriage. You know, <laughs> let's be real. Like the Holy Spirit works in all ways, in all capacities. You can't tame it. You can't stop it. But a lot of times people say, oh, no, he can't work in, in sex. Oh, that's just your life. 
you just missed a blessing, right? Or he can't work with creatures. Like, he's not in creatures and creation. That's, well, you just missed another blessing. That's like, yeah, right? that's putting God in a box. Man, that's, yeah. uh, oh, that would also be yeah. another good video. Yeah, I, I, yeah, Justin, if I showed you the quotes for that, but I may not even do it because, like, it would probably blow up my channel and then I would receive so much hate mail, so much trolls. Like, the stuff that she said in that book, man, it's, I think I remember her name. It's Wiggins, Wig Stevenson. I'll look for it and show you in a minute. But mm -hmm. yeah, let's keep on going, man. I'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is totally a podcast now. So we're just talking now. All right. So, guys, let's go back. All right. So the title of today's video is just just look outside mm -hmm. to see God's glory. Right. And we were focusing in on uh, and breaking down this book that I'm reading for seminary school. It's titled Ask the Beast, Darwin and the God of Love by Elizabeth Ace Johnson, right? And so she used a scripture verse to tie in with what, you know, just tie in with what Darwin was saying in his book, uh, in the last paragraph of his book titled The Origin of Species, right? So we, re we already read that. So now let's talk about what the Bible says. So in Job chapter 12, verse seven, I'm reading from the New International Version Bible. It says, ask the animals and they will teach you or the birds in the sky and they will tell you, right? Or speak to the earth and it will teach you. Or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know the hand of the Lord has done this? <clears throat> and his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. This is so powerful, Justin. You were just saying it earlier. A lot of times people think only human beings have the breath of life. Right, <laughs> only human beings were breathed in life. Well, let's say, let's be more technical. They say breathe in the breath of God, that's what they say, right? But how is a bird living if it wasn't breathed in life? How is an insect or even an ant like I was asking myself that question the other not too long ago, like a month ago? Like, is an insect in a life like are they alive? Like, yes, they're alive. Well, you've seen them when they die and they can't move anymore, just like a human being. Right, so everything on earth that you see an alligator, a crocodile, I don't care, a fish like they're they have the breath of life in them, just like mankind. So, I'm gonna ask everybody a question if that's the case, what makes human beings different than all of creation? I mean, yeah, we can we all know the differences, but like at the end of the day, a human being is just another created creature, just like everything else in the world, right? But so, we're we, we got such a big head as human beings just because God said. You know, you have dominion. You you call the rule right over all creation. Mm. And just that mindset has gotten to our heads to make us abuse everything around us, make us just basically crap on everything God done made. Could we not even focus in? We're not even being good stewards of the of the creation of the world that He has created and called us specifically as human beings to take care of. That's what dominion means. I'm giving you responsibility to take care of everything you see here, right? So how are you going to take care of something if you don't pay attention to it, right? If you just don't look outside. And I like what Darwin said, Justin, when he said, uh, well, the author said it, you know, after saying what the author said. I mean, after the author said it after reading that last paragraph on Darwin's book. But this part right here. Because I didn't get it, I had to look up what a window seal is. But <laughs> it's a, even a window box on the on the seal. So I don't know what she meant by that. Like she said, just go out into all creation, look at the beach, look at the park, look at the uh, block of a city trees, the prairie. You can see God's glory everywhere, right? Any and everywhere. What a sunset and a sunrise! Like that's beautiful. The sun, the sun is freaking orange. The whole sky is orange when it comes up. Like it's beautiful, right? You guys seen it before? Like, have you been on a beach before? Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. What's the most beautiful places on earth to go to, right? Me and Justin did a video on the Northern Lights. What, is it, what else is it called, Justin? Oh, Aurora Borealis. Yeah, we did a video on that. That was our last video we did together. And like, that's so beautiful, man. Like God has some beautiful stuff in creation. All pointing back to him, showing how glorious, how amazing, how spectacular our God is, right? And this Arthur said, look at the window sill. So basically I just took that like, look, just open up your curtains, open up your blinds, and look outside. Like a lot of people can't do that because all we have is houses and 
just slums and stuff just occupying everything. Like we just ruined creation. But if you go to somewhere where nobody hasn't really touched it, like go on a hike or go 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 on a beach or somewhere, you know what I mean? And then you can see what God has created. And it is beautiful. A rainforest. I wouldn't go in a rainforest. You probably got to watch out for snakes and stuff and tigers. I don't know. But like, yeah, man, just look outside your window and see how great God's creation is, right? It's a beautiful thing. But are you paying attention and looking? And, and, and are you listening? He is speaking through creation, right? So, Justin, I'll let you tear it yeah, up. Yeah, and <laughs> like the thing about looking outside and at creation as well is like everything is like so complicated as well. Like they're like if you go, oh gosh, I don't even know where to start. Like uh, I'll start with like the sunset. Like it's just a it's a universe. Like it's just universally accepted that that's a beautiful thing. Like. All, every culture, every person, like, how can you create something that everyone, like, a majority of people think is beautiful? And there's, like, so much complications related to that. Because not only do you have, like, a huge ball of hydrogen-helium fusion going on in space that's sending light particles that's both a particle and a wave through our atmosphere, it's how it interacts with the atmosphere that creates its uh, refraction like it has to be at the perfect angle through our atmosphere to create like that vibrant red and purple hue. Gosh, and like everything I just said was related to like one thing on the list that Sean said. It's like a beautiful sunset that creates a, like a universally praised colors. And like there's so much work and science that goes into that. Like how can Christians not believe that something so scientific is so beautiful as well? And it's like, man, I, I won't even... It, it's the just everything about creation is so complicated like i can't believe that it wasn't designed by somebody and like even um even um like even darwin was saying like uh like life had to have been breathed into like so many different things that we see as beautiful like the uh could you pull up that slide again um yeah john it's like um like you would have to believe like uh life was breathed into like these plants into the woods into like trees into like these fields to coral reefs to like all these things it's like there's so much diversity that it's like diver like that's the beautiful thing about it as well like we see I look at like, when I look at a church, like I see the beauty of like so many different walks of life and so much diversity, or that's what it should be in a church at least, that everyone is like so different. They have like no reason to be together, but they are because they have a similar foundation in God. The same thing to like all of these, there's like no right for all of these things to be so beautiful, but they are. And like, we all, we have, like that's uh i think it has that diversity because god allows us to see beauty in so many different ways because like yeah. like as people we're not satisfied with like one one miracle like he's given us so many different ones and like that's uh let's see where do i want to go with this and like that's what um that's kind of what like darwin was pointing towards as well because like lots of people see it darwin as like trying to blaspheme against God, but really I think it supports like the beauty that God has because somewhere else in like Darwin's, um, I, I haven't read the entirety of like uh, uh, on the origins of species, obviously. And plus like, it's hard to understand, but it does talk about how life, how like a natural selection or evolution does not happen in leaps and bounds. It's supposed to happen gradually. But like, if you actually look at the history of species, like it does, it actually does like explode out of nowhere. And someone had this, um, someone had this uh, uh, visual for me one time. If you look at, we can actually trace like how old the universe is, which is pretty cool. If you look at like how, if you see like all of the universe on a clock, like from 12, like say the present is like at noon and the beginning of life was at like, or the beginning of the universe was at like midnight. Like supposedly based on 
if you took evolution like at if if you took evolution at its face value that a lot of scientists naively believe like um sorry uh then you would think that evolution happened very gradually like a mutation here a difference here like you would think it would um cover up a majority of the clock face but it doesn't like if you look if you look at the beginning of the universe it goes all the way from 12 then all the way back to 11 and then for some reason between 11 and 12 there's an explosion of species there's an ex explosion of like animals which is crazy because that shouldn't be that way unless there was direction unless there was a purpose for like um all the species to change or to find diversity that quick quickly because like even in i've pulled up some like uh um some excerpts from the origins of species like it says like uh nature this is paraphrasing nature should never take a great and sudden leap but must advance by the short and sure through slow steps but like that's not what happens when we look at like purely from a scientific um examination if you look at fossil records i wish i had like pictures for this stuff and so, but like if you look at fossil records if you look at progression of species uh like it's actually like an explosion of species almost like um and you have like organs you have like skeletal structures just like skip like from one species to the next when it should be like supposedly gradually but like that doesn't happen like you suddenly have like you have almost like a new structures new organs as if it was like designed specifically for that animal so like some people could say that's that's like a that's a defense against evolution maybe it could be i don't know again like i'm that's not my area of expertise but like it does show like there are holes in that theory of like um it didn't just like happen gradually like it it did happen very quickly as if it was designed that way as if like one species had particular biological or like skeletal structure that was unique for them and i think that's um i'm not sure where i was going with that but it was basically to say that um like there was a design set out for some of these species like there was a design or a blueprint on our biology that had a final destination to it so it's it didn't just happen randomly like it could have happened randomly but according to the origins of species, if it happened randomly, it should have taken like forever for that to appear. But it didn't. It really did come out of nowhere. Yeah. And that's yeah, that's what makes creation so beautiful is because like you have all these, you have this diversity that really did come out of nowhere. And I think that points to like the beauty and design that God had. Yeah, I'm not going to say the verses. Because I'm tired of finding, I have to look up the verse and put it on the PowerPoint. Yeah. So I'm not doing it. But in 1 Corinthians 12, like J Justin just said, like, Justin, we need to hit that one again, man. Mm. Just do a video on 1 Corinthians 12, breaking it down verse by verse. So, like, that verse was so powerful. So, at the very end of 1 Corinthians 12, there's 31 verses. So, about verse 25, 23, 28, just all those verses. It talks about how, um, well, actually, throughout it, it says it three different times. It says, like, one member does not make up the church. Or, like, one member, like, a lot of times people think the pastor is called to do everything in the church, right? But that's one member. So not every member is an eye. That's what it. That's what Paul said. Not every member is a lung, right? Because if it's just an eye, if it's just a lung, they're nothing without the body. It would literally be dead without the body it has to flow through all the blood vessels and veins and and then your heart like it has to be all be attached working in tangent working in order with each other because how do you get cancer i think justin you can help me with this it's a science term but basically one of your body parts just does something completely different and operates in a completely different way than what everything else is already doing and and function to do so it has a mind of its own right that's how you get a, a cancer or any illness. Like it's just a part of your body that just does something. That's mostly like it's actually at a smaller scale. It's like, 
oh, okay. cellular level. You, a cell decides to do something on their own. Oh. Then it just like grows from there. We're actually, uh, yeah, it's actually interesting because like we're actually, you and I are actually getting cancer cells right now, but our body is fighting against that. But like all it takes mm. is like for one cell or a group of cells to like bypass that security and then we start, bam, we start getting a tumorous, tumor, tumorous growth. So yeah, and okay. evolves into like a body part or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it evolves to a body part. All right, so that's, that's great. So a lot of times, <laughs> but it's just serving like crazy, man. But I'm not going to go there. But basically, I'm just trying to say, like, the church is more than one member. The body of Christ is more than one member. The only superstar in this whole entire thing is Jesus. That's the only one. He's the head. Everybody else is a part of the body of Christ. And we already talked about it before. Like, God speaks through creation, right? So human beings are made. It takes, like, 7,500 different parts to make a human body. So, you know, veins, blood vessels, uh, bones, ligaments. I don't know the neck bone, the tail bone, all that stuff. But just everything that makes your whole entire body, you name all the parts, it should add up to something like that, right? That's a lot of freaking parts working together. That's the body of Christ. That's that's humanity. Like everything Justin says points to a bigger picture and a smaller one. Like, you know, he said that God is in diversity and God is seen through and in diversity, right? So. A lot of times as the church and as believers, we think everybody got to be like me. So everybody got to listen to the same type of music I listen to. Everybody got to like the same scripture verses I like. The church got to sing these songs for me to go to it. Bro, you kidding me? That's what Paul told these baby Christians in Corinthians, in, in Cor Corinth. He was like, what are you talking about? He's like, God's in diversity. Like, not every member is called to do the same thing. Not every member is meant to be this kind of way. Like we need diversity to reach everybody. We need diversity to see God. That's what this passage is talking about and what we're talking about for today's video. Like just go outside to see God's glory. You don't just see God's glory through human beings. You can see it through an eagle. You can see it through a pigeon. You can see it through a duck. You can see it through an ant. You can see it through anything. That's how powerful our God is. Like people like to like to limit God and say he only operates in this way. Like you see how the videos come together? Like, no, God is everywhere. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. You would agree with that statement, right? So because he's everywhere, he can be seen any and everywhere in everything. All the time, 24-7. The Holy Spirit is always at work. But a lot of times we miss out on seeing it. So I want to go back to the scripture verse. Man, Job is so powerful. And this was just Job. We didn't even hit Proverbs yet. He said, but ask the animals and they will teach you. Ask them. The whole freaking title of the book is said, ask the beast. That's what she was talking about. Go out and ask these, these creatures. Ask the birds and they will tell you. Ask the earth. So ask the soil. Ask how the seeds work. We just did a video, me and uh, Terry, we did a video on like John 12, 24 to 25. And it's just talking about how, you know, basically as believers, we get buried. <laughs> or in life, sometimes we get buried just like a seed. But a seed has to get buried in order to, to transform into something else. It has to be buried, planted, and watered, nourished, right? <laughs> in the dark, in an area that's grimy and confined, right? Just so the seed can die, shatter, break, and life can come from it. And then it can grow into something. It can grow into, I don't know what grows, that's a fruit. But like, you know, uh, it can grow into a tree, right? It can grow, a seed can grow into different things, right? There's a lot of different seeds. So the question is, what kind of seed did God make you, right? That's what a freaking seed, right? We'll be talking about mustard seed all, all the time, but what's the sermon for that? Like, how does a mustard seed grow? What does it grow into? It may be small, but what can happen with a mustard seed, right? So the size of a seed does not matter, right? Because when life comes from it, when Jesus comes into your life, because you were dead before him, right? You become alive and you break and turn into a new creation. You, the old creation is a seed. The new creation is something else. So whatever God created you to be, he created so many things. He created fish. He created eagles. He created uh, hawks. He created even crows. I mean, he created things you hate and you don't like. Like, I, what's something you don't like just in creation? What, what? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, like, oh man, let me think about it. like those uh tarantulas, the spiders. Oh, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's some ugly things in creation you don't want anything to do with. 
but it still glorifies God. Like, you know what I'm saying? like that's what I asked. I asked, like, is a gnat, is a gnat something that was created by God, or is that is is it because of human sin that gnats are created? But either way, it is created. It is here. If it is here, it is created by God. God created it. So like <laughs> he's glorified through it. Like you can learn a lot through we're about to we're about to see how some creatures give glory and honor to God. But I want to go back to this verse, man. Let me and Justin, stop me when you're ready, man. I know you got stuff. So or speak to the earth and it will teach you and let or let the fish of the sea inform you. All right, here it go. Here it goes. Which of these does not know the hand of the Lord has done this? That let me stop there. It's sad. There's a song. You guys should totally look it up. It's, it says, I will never let no rock. I will never let no rock cry out in my place. It's a real old school song back in like the 80s. So like, and that's a scripture verse. I will never let a rock cry out of my place. The scripture verse says that um, if I don't praise the Lord, if you don't praise the Lord, if somebody in creation that's a human being chooses not to praise the Lord, because it's really just human, then everything else in creation will. Everything else in creation will still glorify God. The sun goes up and down every single day in the moon. And they're doing what God created it to do. The stars, they're still going to shine. Humans can't kill every single star that ever exists. There will just be more, right? You know, so like humans are limited, right? You know what I'm saying? Like we think we're the end all be all. But no, like all of creation is glorifying God. That's Psalms 148, right? So just talking about everything in creation, everything you can think of, right? Which of these does not know the hand of the Lord has done this? Everyone is, every single one of them knows. Like, like God did, God did it for them, right? And even if they don't, they're glorifying God by doing, they're glorifying God by just doing what they were created to do. A fish is never going to try to be a giraffe. And a giraffe will never try to be a pumpkin, right? These things are called to be something that God created them to be. And that's what they're going to do, right? Every animal is so powerful. Like, Human beings always say, like, animals aren't smart. Like, animals just don't have no common sense like humans. Like, but animals are bad. Like, you need to watch Animal Planet, man. Like, the stuff that animals do is crazy. Like, how would they think to do that? Yeah. Because they know their strengths and weaknesses. And they know what they need. Like, how does a, how do you get food, for example? Like, every, that's another question I ask. Does everything in creation need food, Justin, like, to survive? Yes. Yeah. Like, Everything needs it. Even an ant, like, you know, a, a plant needs freaking food. Like, everything needs food. So, like, okay. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. But, like, uh, yeah, so just, uh, I'll let you go, man. Yeah. Um, oh, shoot, I forgot what I was going to say, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's like, um, it is crazy that, uh, like, I don't want to say this. And it's like every, like, we we kind of put ourselves up there as like we think we're the smartest things but like um god did create us with like a purpose he created like all animals with a purpose like as I, we said before everything has its design and purpose in the great circle of life and like even people as well but like we were created with a with like a greater purpose or dominion over creation as well and we've kind of fell away from that and like uh it actually reminds me of what i was reading in daniel 7 i'll read like a small excerpt and this is like a prophecy from daniel then i continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking i kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire so like at this time daniel is seeing this vision of like human civilization and cultures who have turned away from god and because of that like we're acting like beasts like he's describing civilization as these beasts and that goes to a let me see and that 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 um that goes towards like romans chapter 1 verse 18 for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth for what for what can be known about god is plain to them because god has shown it to them like God has shown us like the create he's shown us his power. Like people are always acting, oh, if God like existed, why doesn't he like show himself? Then one, he did through Jesus and we killed him. Two, he's showing us constantly through creation that there's a creator out there. Um, but because we've turned away from him, he's like 
uh, what was that other verse? Let me see. I think that was also in Romans 1. Oh, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. So he, our punishment is like, our, our punishment doesn't seem like a punishment, but uh, he pretty much left us to our own devices. We, and we like just try to grab at whatever we can through life. Like we're doing, we're literally acting out what Darwin says we do. Like we're trying to be sur the survival of the fittest. It's like we're bringing other people down. Like what else does that? Like beasts do that. Like we have the mind of beasts. Like we're no longer, um, we think we're on top of the food chain, but man, we're like competing in this vicious cycle against animals, against creation, against like all kinds of things. Because like we've been brought down to the level of beasts. So, like yeah. uh, looping back around back to Daniel 7 at the end of the vision, Daniel says, in my vision at night, I looked and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory and sovereign power. All nations and people of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. And that's what I was wanting to get at. We, the beasts in uh, Daniel's prophecy, were supposed to originally have that dominion. But like we turned away from God. Like we turned away because we didn't believe in God. Because we, for some reason, we don't see the beauty that God has in creation. Because we like refuse to believe in him. We've been left to our own devices. We've been giving we've been thrown back into the survival of the fittest and we're trying to fight and claw our way to the top constantly. Like we're trying to bring other people down just because we want to like survive. Like that's our punishment for like turning away from like the general revelation that God has given us in uh, creation. And like, because we've turned away from that, we no longer have that dominion. We no longer have that authority that Adam and Eve had at the beginning. So like that authority had to be given to Jesus. And it's only through Jesus, or son of man, as um, Daniel put it, it's only through Jesus that we can get that dominion and authority back. But as long as we like refuse to believe in like a God that is creator of all things, like we're, we're thrown into that survival of the fittest. We are living out the origins of species that uh, Darwin talks about. Yeah, I like how you said that, man. Like, it's only through Jesus mm. that we can be redeemed. So, like, the planet is dying. Like, let's be honest, yeah. guys. Do y'all think, yes. do you think human beings are, as a whole, right, as a whole, are doing everything for the survival of the planet, one, for the survival of humanity, two, and then for the survival of other species, right? Because at the end of the day, God gave man dominion over the earth, right? What does dominion mean? What does it mean to rule over everything? Because God, you know, he said, man, that's you. You're called to do it, right? But how are we doing it, right? So like, man, I got so much stuff listed out. Like, I'm going to read some stuff from the book, Justin, <laughs> just so everybody can see what I see. So she said this on page 284 of Ask the Beast, this book, right? She said, financial investments, political interests, and social standing tend to tie their institutional public presence to status quo, now so harmful to ecological flourishing. Flourishing. All right, I want you guys to see that. So do human beings do stuff for ecological flourishing? No. We do stuff for financial investing, political interests, and social standings. So like, for example... Did y'all know people have been murdered just for like trying to, pro to protect the rainforest and stuff like that? Just like humanitarians, I think that's what they're called. So people who uh, literally care about the planet and try their best to like, you know, tell them like, for example, pollution. What do we do with the waste that we keep on giving to whoever we give it to that takes it from our house every Thursday or whatever, right? What do they do with the waste, right? They, some of them throw it in seeds and stuff, like killing off and causing other animals to be extinct in the sea, polluting the sea, right? So, like, there's so much stuff that human beings do, guys. So much stuff that 
so many ways that we operate that's leading to like us humanity killing the world, human action. Yeah, the author said e eco ecologically, the community of living creatures is now under terrible threat due to human action. She said that on page two seven two eighty five. So, so human beings are killing off every species of life from our living apathetically without care, without concern, without any regard or what's ar what's around in the rest of the world, right? So just think about that, like with the chemicals that they're doing, like and pushing out these factories and stuff with fossil fuels. That's a great yeah, with cars. Right. You think EVs is doing good. No, like even this, they got stuff, too, that's like killing the environment. So like ugh, eventually we're going to cut every single tree that there is to exist eventually. Right. Just to make a house. So what is that going to do to our planet? You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> global warming, like some people don't believe in that. Like people literally get beat up for saying anything about global warming or murder. It's sad. But like what's going on with the weather, man? Like, come on. Is your weather? Has it changed since y'all? I'm, I'm 30 years old. Justin, you're 31, 30. right? So, like, 32? 33. Oh, dang. Yeah. You just I, turned 33, I, right? <laughs> last month. Oh, dang. Okay. Did you even tell me it was your birthday? Did I miss that? Oh, um, sorry. I guess it's, like, not something I advertise a whole lot. What the heck, man? We got to talk about this. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but anyway, it's like. Yeah, man, there's so many problems in this world. Man. I'm going to keep on reading. Like, I want you guys to see this. Like, just I know you got stuff. Like, page 242, this is what Johnson says. She says, for a time, Earth could replenish its physical resources after human use. But no longer. We are depleting supplies of clean and healthy soil at too rapid a rate. For a time, other species could largely regrow their population after human pred predation. But no longer are zooming numbers coupled with habits of consuming and polluting have colicide, colicide, yeah, colicide into an engine of destruction of others. All right, page 242 still. The human species have even become geophysical force capable of raising the planet's temperature, searing droughts, annual once in a century floods, mega fires, massive storms, and rising sea levels give evidence that the weather itself is becoming traumatized so the weather itself is becoming traumatized mm -hmm. right so like there's so much stuff that he, the way humans are operating right we're called to be good stewards of the earth god has literally just like a king would do with the official like a king would appoint official and an, an official in ancient time periods if the king had to go somewhere else he would have an official oversee whatever kingdom that was his that he had to go somewhere else to you know do something right so, like, God has done the same thing with humans, right? He's given us, that's what it means to have dominion, to have, uh, to, we're a steward of God's creation, right? And God has given us a planet to take care of. We're responsible for it. And look at us. How are human beings doing? Mm. Is, it, is it great? <laughs> like, like, let's talk about money. Let's talk about money. Like, they do everything for a profit. Whether that and this is what the book's talking about, man. Justin, you said it, man. Like it talked about like the human impact on the living world, right? Here's what human impact on the living world has been a tragedy, right? Yeah. Like, for example, population growth is one of the human impacts that's negatively impacting this world. Like these people that got like 12 kids, 16 kids, like it's bad to say. Like you would think that's a good thing, especially in slavery time or something like that. But like now our planet is getting to the point where it's too like some places are too populated and then other places aren't populated at all right it's actually scarce right oh and then the, and then the overpopulated places is scarce like it's scarcity going around mm -hmm. so like they don't have as many foods like factories are there you know giving off chemicals you know making the environment not safe to live and breathe into so like the poor people don't really get like the resources that they should get right then in the rich environments, like they have everything. They have all the resources. They got EVs, fossil fuels, all that stuff, right? But again, like they are, they're consuming too much energy. The poor societies and poor nations, they don't consume energy like that, right? So like the energy is killing off some stuff. You see what I'm saying? Like we got to work together as human beings and make sure everybody's getting what they need. But instead, no, the rich are getting richer and the poor is getting poorer. So, like, 
yeah. yeah. <laughs> so population growth a problem. Then they said uh, we got to start living in births or at least like working together and regulating, uh, you know, how many children a couple can birth for the betterment of the world. You know, because again, eventually, like she said, eventually we're going to eat up all the fish, for example. Right. Because that's how fast humanity is growing. Right. The the prey that we're trying to eat. Right. Eventually is going to die off because we're eating at it, eating it at such a rapid pace. Right. So we're causing other species to go extinct. Is that what God wanted? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, eventually I told Justin before the call, I said, eventually we're going to eat all the fish. Right. And you know how money hungry the government is. Right. So eventually the government's going to be like, well, let's just make some fish. Like, let's make fake fish, put them in the sea. Nobody would know. They'll eat it anyways, fish. And then, and if they don't do that, <laughs> they're just going to do, uh, they're just going to get fishes who are surviving in awful sea areas and oceans, like they are polluted. So like it has diseases and stuff and give that to people because they'll do anything for a profit. You know, this world, yeah. the rich will do anything for a profit. Yeah. So, like that's the type of world we live in. Like, where human beings are bad stewards. Human beings don't care. They're apathetic. And Justin just said it. You have to have Jesus to care. That's basically what he said. Like Jesus redeems everything. He get he 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 costs lack of concern, lack of being lackadaisical, being apathetical. He gets all that out the door, right? Because at the end of the day, who's your neighbor? I always say every single time when the, when the church say that, oh my brother and sister, they're my neighbor. That's my neighbor. No, all creation is your neighbor. So that ants your neighbor. That 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 uh pigeons your neighbor. I mean, the the one that you don't like, the species you don't like, like like I said, the uh tarantula. That's your neighbor, right? <laughs> Just, so sometimes stuff that you don't want to be your neighbor is your neighbor. And what are you doing to your neighbor, right? Like this, this is so deep, guys. Like, <laughs> and we have been lacking like crazy. I want to read this verse too. And uh, Justin, we should just do another part of the video, man. Like, <laughs> Justin, this verse is so powerful, man. This is going to be a good sermon. So Proverbs 12.10 reads this. Any animal lovers will love this verse. It says, the righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Mm. I'm going to read a different That's really verse. good. I like that verse. Right. That's so Proverbs, powerful. Right, Proverbs 12, 10 from the King James Version Bible. It says, a righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. So, like, basically, you're, you know, animals, I mean, it's hard to say. Like, I don't give a dang about dogs, if I'm being honest. I don't really, I like cats. I Do like you not cats. like dogs? Okay, I never knew that. I think you're a cat person. Nothing wrong with that. I just didn't know. I don't really care, honestly. <laughs> Either side. Like, if it's Scooby-Doo, yes. If it's a smart dog, oh, yeah. I love smart dogs. But, you know, I just had Koda, man. That was Koda was an Akita, a Japanese Akita dog. Like, he was just, he was handicapped or something. Man. Something was wrong with him. But anyways, uh, we talk about it all the time on my YouTube channel. The Book of Proverbs. So any anything, any proverb you see from the Book of Proverbs in the Bible is just a general statement that is true regarding the way that life works, regarding the way that things happen in this world. It's an observation made about life that we can draw lessons from and conclusions from, from these observations to change our lives. That's what the book of Proverbs is, right? I just read a proverb to you, right? And so with this proverb, it's just saying, you know, the wickedest person is cruel to everything they see around them. They're cruel to every creature around them. Yeah. But a righteous person, a person who a righteous means right living, right way of living, right way of operating, you know, be in alignment with God's will. That's a righteous person, right? They care for the needs of animals. They care for the needs of those around them, for the plants, for the, you know, for anything around them. The title of the video is just go outside and see God's glory. So the question is, what are you doing with all the things that's showing God's glory? Are you spitting on them? Are you, you, you drowning the the ant hill that used to be fun as a kid, you know, with the water hose. <laughs> and this is so, Justin, this video is so crazy, man. But I mean, it's true. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing with all the creatures that, you know, is on God's green earth? I'm not saying don't kill a bug when it's on your face, like, you know, mm. like a mat or something. But dang, like, <laughs> Justin, I'll let you take it. Yeah, and like, you know? that's interesting you said that. And I wish, because some, one of my friends just shared with me yesterday, like, they were trying to find sin and oh gosh, there's so many directions to go with this. 
uh, one person was saying like sin is like the lack of caring, which I thought was interesting. I don't quite agree with that. I think lack of caring is a symptom of sin because I think sin is like it's your separation from God. It's like you're it's like missing the mark when it comes to God. Um, but like I, I totally agree, like a lack of care could definitely be a symptom of sin though. And that's kind of what you were saying as well. Like when we see someone when we have like a lack of empathy or we see someone who is suffering and we just don't care, like I definitely think that's a symptom of sin. And you see like the earth have symptoms of that sin as well. Like in Genesis, after Adam and Eve sinned, like it affected the earth. Like it even says like sin like seeped into the soil. So like you see these disasters, you see the earth dying, you see us exasperated, exasperated by just not caring. And you really do see people try to like just killing the earth for a quick buck. And like, that's insane to me just to like how much is like how much money is like enough because you see people who are already rich trying to get richer like do like why does it like build much more security is it like a power game but all i know is like you do see people killing the earth to like make a living to like reach the top and like so i i do agree like with what my friend was trying to say in like that lack of empathy and just not caring is like ingrained into us because like we are creatures of flesh unfortunately we are playing this game where we are not trying to help one another thrive and like that's what the bible tells us to do is like if any if any brother or sister is like lacking we're supposed to be helping them in that area because otherwise it becomes like a dog eat dog world in which we are just like killing off everyone like that's basically what we're doing is we're killing off other people we're stepping on them we're like killing the earth just so like we can like we can reach out a little bit further or like like uh push people all of the way just a little bit further and i don't know it's i sean and i were talking about like scammers before this it's crazy like how much money are they really making from like scamming people it's like they have to put in so much effort like why not just get an honest job or like um even like a and i'm not putting down drug dealers or anything because like i think it was like our last video where we where we were saying like we always we think at least as long as we're better than other people and it's like easy to see like how god is not working through a drug dealer but like that's also not like a sustainable job either like a majority of drug dealers actually earn less than a mcdonald's minimum wage worker like it, you're not going to like unless you're like the kingpin or something like that which is you, there's only one in an area you're not going to become a kingpin but like i don't know they like they i i guess like some people take that route because they think that's the like that's the best way to make a quick buck or that's the only outlet for them but honestly like no they're killing themselves and they're killing other people by trying to like um put down other people and it's like i don't know it again i'm just repeating everything i said like god has left us out to our own devices and we've decided to become like the beasts that we think we're above but really we're we're killing ourselves and killing the earth that way we're worse than them mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. We are worse than them. Absolutely. Because at least beasts, at least animals know that know where their place is. We give our fault. We have a false. Uh, we lie to ourselves and say we're better, but we're not better. Yeah. Mm. Humans, man, we got a lot of. I mean, this world's doomed. I don't have no hope, man, but. <laughs> I just can't wait till Jesus comes back when he redeems it all and we operate the way we should be operating. One day. Yeah, I'm going to cut off this video and we we'll just do another part yeah. of the same one. All right, guys, but you guys know the drill, man. If you enjoyed this video, we got way more videos where you can watch and stream. 
So all you got to do is just go to my YouTube channel, Upload Past Crossroads. I'm also on any podcast platform you could think of. So Google Chromecast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it. You can search for me, find my podcast. All right. And so, uh, yeah, my Facebook, LinkedIn, Sean Christopher Jenkins, Twitter, or now it's called X, Snap, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, Trouble Don't Last. My other Instagram page, my underscore daily for Bible. And then my Tumblr page, Trouble Don't Last, number one. So if you go to my YouTube channel, you see I got a lot of playlists. So if you scroll down on um, my YouTube channel, Upload Past Crossroads, you see me and Justin have a playlist. So anybody I do a video with, you can see our podcast right here. So Justin's uh, playlist is right here. So we got around 80 to 90 videos that we already done together. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, just check out that playlist to see even us talking even more. And uh, if you enjoyed this video as well, I got a playlist titled Book Breakdowns, Book Reviews. This is where we just break down the books that we've been studying, we've been reading, and we tear it up just like we did for this video. So, And then God Speaks Through Creation. This is another playlist so you can see any sermons, Bible studies, any discussions me and Justin did, and eventually future animations on this topic, God Speaks Through Creation. If you enjoyed us dissecting the book of Proverbs, which is I'm not, I'm not done with. I'm actually going to – that's where we're going to talk go at now for this part of the video. So this is a part two for this video we just did. So stay tuned for that. So, yeah, any sermons Bob says I've done in the book of Proverbs or any discussion me and Justin had, check out that. Proverbs 30. I'm actually about to do that one right now. Let me see what this one is. In the book of Job. Yeah, so these are all my sermons and Bible studies are going to be at uh, for that. So, all right. But anyways, here goes Justin's YouTube channel, Chaplain's Log. So make sure to subscribe. And after you subscribe to our YouTube channels, click the bell so you're notified anytime we upload another video. And make sure to like, comment, and share on every single video. And then if you go to Justin's Facebook page, Justin Lee Howe, you can befriend him on there. And then also you can DM us on our Facebook pages. If you got any questions, we'll do a video on the questions that you ask. And let me go ahead and like this. I want you guys to see this. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> this is Justin and his family dressed up as uh, Star Wars people, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, I, 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 I won't show everybody. I'll just, <laughs> just keep it private. Like, I want to I want to see the... The outfits, yeah. Here we go. Oh yeah, right. yeah, right here. <laughs> I want everybody to see that. Yeah, that was fun. This is, yeah, this is what every Justin year was doing for the theme. It's whatever my nieces are into that year. This year was Star Wars. Another year was Harry Potter. Yeah, they were in the Star Wars like that. What's that? I said they were in the Star Wars like that. Yeah, I'm like my brother actually got them into the movies. Surprisingly, okay. so they just yeah they jumped on board on that. She supposed to be Girl Crew, your sister. Yeah, yeah, Baby Yoda. Gu yeah. How, I said it. how do you say his name? Grogu. Grogu or it's Grogu. Grogu. Okay. It's, it's Baby Yoda. That's what. Yeah, it is. everyone just says Baby Yoda. <laughs> right. All right, guys. We'll talk to you guys in a minute. We we'll hit you guys with another one. Peace out. Thanks.